Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Everybody loves blown goblets, so I'm doing a series of videos on the various aspects of making glass goblets. I'll be covering feet, bowls, stems, and aesthetics, all in separate videos. You should definitely watch them all, and all the more reason to subscribe today. Today's demo is about how to properly make a blown goblet foot that is perfectly round, thin, and as flat as you want it to be. Let's get into it. Let me begin by stating that like many of the techniques I show you here, there are many ways to spin a foot. I can only show you my way, but let me assure you, my way works. I've taught literally hundreds of people how to do this, and if you learn the technique properly, you will be guaranteed to get a perfect foot every time. I worked out this technique using points, and pulling proper points is a subject for another video. You can attach a 9.5mm handle and do the same thing, but it's just extra work in my opinion. Using points is fast and easy, and the amount of hot glass you're supporting is so small that there's no strength advantage to handles either. Handles only make sense if the foot is to be made of expensive colored glass. To demonstrate the technique, today I will be using a clear glass point that I've pulled from 38 by 2.8 millimeter tubing. I suggest you practice with clear glass until you have the technique down cold before trying it with the much more expensive colored glass. It starts with the setup bubble. The shape is important. My formula is that the bubble should be half as long as it is wide and half the diameter of your intended finished foot. It should be perfectly round and symmetrical too but twice as wide as it is long is the secret to getting it right every time. The next step is to examine your setup bubble carefully. Usually one end will be a little cleaner and more symmetrical than the other. The rule is, always flare the nice side of the bubble. So determine which side is the better one and burn off the point on the other side. Melt the bleb down until you have a nice rounded shape with a bit of extra thickness in the middle. This is where the stem will attach. The next step is to add the transition bit. Traditionally, this is called an avolio, but real avolios are shaped like hourglasses. The transition bit can be any shape, a sphere or a bicone or even just a cylinder. If it is shaped any other way than the hourglass, it is not really an avolio. I have always preferred bicones for my goblets. Now I attach a punty at least 16 inches long. I make this a clean, hot seal, not a cold seal. I prefer 6 mm for this because it turns nicely in my hand. If you can spin another diameter of rod easily, you can use it instead. But I think that most people will prefer something in the 6 to 8 mm range for optimum spinning ability. Now comes one of those little hacks that flame workers use daily but are invisible to most people who do not flame work glass. There's nearly always a little bit of wobble that you'll want to remove. The way to do this is to center the handle side. My technique is to let go of the point and use gravity to center the handle to the setup bubble. Sometimes I even use my hand to block the other half of the bubble from my vision so I can see the centering more clearly. What this does is to move whatever wobble is left over to the point side. When I remove the point, all the remaining wobble goes with it. The next step is to remove the point. Many people use jacks to neck down the point and diamond jacks to break it off cleanly. I have always simply done a flame cut and trimmed the lip with shears. Both methods work well. For today's demo, 
I'm using the Affina V Constriction Tool by Firekist to take the place of the jacks. This method is much quicker than the old flame cut and shear method I used to use. There is a link in the description for this tool. Once the point is removed, I use the tip of a graphite reamer to open the hole wider. I continue to heat and widen until the opening is the same diameter as the widest part of the bubble. If I achieve that and the lip is straight, I'm guaranteed to get a round foot. If the lip is not straight, I heat the entire bubble and flare and paddle the lip until it is. Now the fun begins. There are two secrets to making this work every time. One, always keep the lip in the center of the flame. The lip has to move the farthest, so it has to be the hottest. Two, keep your handle perfectly horizontal until the very end. This optimizes the force of gravity to help you achieve a perfectly flat foot. If you lift up your handle while flaring so that the foot hangs down, you'll tend to get more of a cone or a hyperbolic shape. You don't want this until the end. As I increase the rate of spin, the lip starts to kick out. Right away you can see that the gradient of heat determines the shape of the foot. To get a flat foot, the gradient of heat must continue all the way to the attachment bit, but if I put the flame there, the foot could start to wobble. So to work around this problem, I wait until the lip is kicked out most of the way. The foot will have kind of a derby hat shape to it. At that point, I swing the handle directly away from me so that the flame hits the bottom of the foot. The lip is still in the center of the flame, and the handle is still horizontal, but now the heat gradient goes all the way to the center. Almost immediately, the foot kicks out dead flat. Finally, I return to the first position, but now I lift up the handle and slow down the rotation to let the foot hang just a little. In this way, I control the degree of steepness to the resulting shape. It should be a very shallow cone with just a small rise in the center. The nice thing about this technique is that it only takes a few minutes from start to finish, and it only uses a small amount of glass each time. You throw the points away, but the punty can be used again. This way, you can easily repeat the technique many times in a relatively short period. Most people can perfect the technique after about 20 tries. Once you have it down, you'll know it for life. Well, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this demo, please like and subscribe. Share this video with your friends and come back here often. I'll be posting new videos regularly. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.